Hey, welcome everybody. This lecture is going to be about inflammation and pain processes in the body, mainly muscles and joints, we're going to talk about today. And please take that information just as a health advice. It's not a substitute for any medical examination or consultation. Let me give you an overview of what we're going to talk about today. It's uh, what can cause inflammation. Uh, what's the relation between the guts, your digestion and inflammation in the body. And then we're, I'm going to talk about the different approaches you can have for your diet. And this is something you have to try. Because some people have joint pain and digestive problem. Some people have in something else underlying in the health. So it really depends. And then we talk just a little bit about lifestyle and routines. I'd like to explain to you first of all the difference between an acute and a chronic inflammation because inflammation is in general very healthy and we need to have that inflammatory response from our immune system like when we cut ourselves, when we burn ourselves or when we eat toxic food or anything the body has to digest and has to get rid of bacteria. Acute is always or more like an injury um, as I mentioned, you cut yourself or you burn yourself, it, it comes first, the immune system reacts and it sends um, macrophages and granulocytes into the places in the body where you, you cut yourself or you burn yourself, just for an example, uh, and you start getting an infection, you know, it's always um, getting swollen, it's going to get red or you experience heat and it's painful. So these are the first reactions of the body and that activates the immune system. And the little soldiers, as I used to call them, they're eating up the bacteria and everything it's not supposed to be in the body. And that normally creates tissue damage. And after that, um, the healing process starts. And that sometimes can be itchy, you can have reactions, you can feel warm. Um, so that's acute inflammation, which is really important, as I mentioned, because we need our, our body to heal properly. Once you maybe have repeated inflammation in the body or you have an inflammation which goes on for a longer time in the body, then you create something called a quiet low-grade inflammation and you normally don't really feel that. You maybe feel tired, you maybe have joint pain, we're going to talk about that. You're not, you're not having enough energy, you know there's something going on but you can't really define it. You know you might have higher body temperature, it's going on for a longer period of time and chronic inflammation creates oxidative stress in the body, in the cells. So it can, it can be because when you eat like a lot of fat or sweets or processed food, you can create plaque in the blood vessels, which kind of decreases the diameter of the blood vessels. So you get heart, um, heart disease, for example, or it creates joint pain. So it's a more systemic um, process in the whole body. Not like where you just cut yourself, but this is more something happened in the whole body as a whole system. You, the causes can be quite different. It can be that you um, react to food that the body doesn't want, where you react to, you are intolerant to it. And this is something you will feel after you eat something, you make a swelling, you feel heavy, you don't feel very well, maybe you have even pain in the abdominal area, um, or maybe you already did some allergy, you have allergies and you can have cross reaction with certain fruits. Um, so you have to check that up. The only thing you can do there is to avoid the food you react to. 
it could be even it doesn't have to be like uh, lactose or gluten it can be other proteins in the milk it can be proteins um, other stuff sitting on grains and legumes uh, it can be chemicals because mainly imported vegetables and fruits are getting um, sprayed with pesticides uh, yeah no it could be a lot of different things and then of course you have toxins it can be toxins you take with your food but it can be also external uh, reasons metal poisoning too much toxins in the water or in the air in in the in the cleaning um, stuff you use to clean your house your bathroom so it could be a good idea to avoid and take and and use more uh, eco-friendly um, substitutes you can have ongoing or repeated infections you can be prone to that um, causes also a systemic inflammation hyperglycemia that means they have an elevated blood sugar which can be if you're diabetic if you're uh, putting waste around your belly often you have a tendency to be insulin resistant insulin is what the body um, kind of flushes out once you eat something and that raises your blood sugar and the body needs to put in uh, insulin in the body so you decrease the blood sugar so it kind of stabilizes the blood sugar uh, so if this is permanently up the body has to flush out insulin which kind of creates an inflammation as well um, so this is not really what we want so you can change that mainly through your diet tissue damage yeah creates inflammation locally which can get systematic nutritional deficiencies and here we're talking mainly of b vitamins and magnesium for example if you have not enough you have more risk to get and to get inflamed and also d vitamin is very important especially if you are elderly or when you take statins which you get when you have a heart disease because they will decrease a lot of vitamins especially antioxidants and d vitamin and your body needs to create that so it kind of blocks d vitamin production um, so you need to take that d vitamin is very important also for hormonal balance and magnesium is important to it helps it's a lot important for enzyme function all kinds of enzymes um, gut health imbalances so if you have SIBO if you have dysbiosis if you have any bad overgrowth of of bacteria if you have not enough stomach acid in your in your stomach which kind of creates or sets of a chain reaction in the body so because if, if you have kind of leaky guts if you eat a lot of food you're intolerant to so it's a relation to that um, or if you take a lot of different pain medications and certain other medications that kind of um, damages the intestinal and stomach lining so particles get again from the stomach into the bloodstream creating a problem in the in the blood vessels uh, an inflammation so this is a little bit information about that so you have all kinds of reasons why you can get an inflammation if we talk about diet now the more colors the more anti-inflammatory and the better your um, gut flora is so you have lots of bacteria you you of course you have maybe bad bacteria because you take a lot of medications or you don't eat the proper food or maybe you can't really digest the food um, then you need to add good bacteria you have to you need to have an, a, a reasonable amount of good bacteria in your guts to keep you healthy and you can create that by eating a diversified diet so the more colors the better a lot of antioxidants and we're talking here about colorful foods like berries um, lots of vegetables especially green vegetables um, 
So the more diversified you eat, different kinds of food and different kinds of colors, the more healthy your gut flora is, the more good bacteria you have. Okay, it's actually they find out in studies that the more good bacteria you have in your stomach, the more happy you are because they are the ones deciding if you're like more depressed or if you're more happy when you wake up. So it's really good to try that. And there are also different studies, one from 2016, which shows a connection between rheumatism and a lot of an overgrowth of bad bacteria in the body or in the, in the gut. So that was very interesting, I thought. So I wanted to mention that. And when we talk about inflammation, you always have a kind of more um, acid environment in your body, which also comes from certain kinds of foods, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. It's because bacteria like to have acid environment. So if you eat more alkaline forming foods, you know, like fruits, vegetables, greens, berries, root veggies or algae, there are lists on the internet, you can Google, you can Google that. Um, the better environment you have for good bacteria, okay, it's less inflammatory. So the basic recommendation is about 75%. And if you feel you have an inflammation starting, then they even recommend 85 to 90%. And acid forming foods are mainly meats because they are, have all kinds of hormones and stress. People who get, um, we're talking now about industrial meat. Um, if fish, if it's also industrial, not wild, like wild catch, eggs as well, uh, legumes, grains, and, and cheese. So you just have some examples here. There was a study, 2018, which took about two years, and they tested people who ate a Mediterranean diet and a normal diet and people who ate a lot of those stuff which mentioned here on on the slide so a lot of water vegetables whole grains olive oil um, on a daily basis they had let less inflammation in the body there are some markers you can check through the common um, health system so you would check the blood, of course. So if we talk about water, they found out that if you not have enough water in your body, then you are more sensitive to pain. So make sure you drink a lot of water. I'm not talking about coffee and tea, like pure water. Lots of greens, lots of antioxidants. There are lots of fibers in fruit and vegetables, which kind of slow down the digestion process. You know, it's not increasing the blood sugar so fast as, um, uh, as you know, like pasta, rice and all that stuff. So as well, so it, it, it doesn't raise the blood sugar so fast, which is good, which what we want. And the fibers are also helping you to go to the toilet. You know, you want to have a bulk in the, in, in the stool so you can really go every day to the toilet. They found actually out uh, if we talk about fibers, if you're a lot of constipation, then you, of course, you're holding more toxins in your body. That um, it's yeah harmful and creates an inflammation. Whole grains are very good because of the fibers. Olive oil has is a good um, fatty acids and an antioxidant, a strong antioxidant. Spices like turmeric and ginger um, are anti-inflammatory. Um, Nuts and seeds, red wine, and you can also say grapes because they have resveratrol in it, which is a, it's an antioxidant. Beans, peas, fish, egg, poultry, cottage cheese on a daily basis. Red meat once a week. There are actually no studies out there which say that red meat is more harmful than like chicken or white meat. 
of course if you eat meat chicken or fish which is produced on an in an industrial way they get like um, bad food genetic modified food then all kind of meat is harmful for the body so here we're talking about red meat is good with this grass-fed uh, animals and aquatic um, and produced nearby and sweet here and then not too much so you can boost your digestion by bacteria you can buy supplements probiotics you can do your own fermented food or buy that kombucha kimchi which creates really nice good bacteria in your intestines which kind of really help, keeps you healthy fibers you can buy prebiotics which is food for the bacteria or in the, in food wholemeal breads fruits greens um and so the typing mistakes should be prebiotics um but if you have a lot of stomach problems like you're really bloated you really have pain you start with probiotics good bacteria first because it can be if you add some fibers it can be too much for your body to digest and you can worsen your symptoms eat as diverse as possible the more colors the healthier you got for a and exercising is also very important because it's giving your whole body a massage. You're having a good flow of blood, uh, lymph, uh, fluid circulation, which is always healthy. So you can really metabolize um, the toxins, everything which should not stay in the body for too long. You should reduce if we start from the bottom allergens so try to avoid food you react to try to avoid processed food because they are sweets they have artificial sweets in, inside they have bad fats inside they are always nutrition deficient um, lots of omega-6 which i'm going to talk about soon and L ales and lges that means that advanced that means that they react the proteins react with the carbon hydrates or the sugar elements in the body and the second one the body is um, reacting with the, the, the proteins react to the fats so which creates an inflammation in the body it often occurs when you grill or stir fry a long time so you want to cook your food or to steam fry or to put it in the oven rather than grilling and frying it um, omega-6 you need to have a good balance about omega-6 omega and omega-3 omega-6 are the bad fatty acids um, which you can find in a lot of meat margarine and vegetable oils you should avoid cooking with vegetable oils. Use coconut oil or real butter instead of ghee. Omega-3 you will find in um, flaxseed oil, walnuts, and fatty fish like salmon. Make sure you eat wild-caught salmon and fish in general, which is not fed with grains and genetic modified food so wild caught uh, mackerel sardines good olive oil as well she should avoid sweets they increase the blood sugar and also the sweets get um, uh, into carbohydrates in the body and then they react with proteins and this is really you don't want that pork meat because pork meat has arachidonic acid in it which is a polyunsaturated omega-6 fatty acid they found out that it's really not healthy to eat too much of that so eat more omega-3 as well enzymes in different studies enzymes can reduce pain what kind of enzymes and i'm talking about 
proteolytic enzymes, so bromelain, serapeptase, papain from ananas, pineapple, you say in English, trypsin, just examples, there are many more. They found out that they have the same effect as anti-inflammatory uh, medication and they help reducing pain, swelling, joint stiffness. There are supplements who have it in it, so you can buy that. And also Boswellia and herbal extracts, which has anti-inflammatory effect. Good one. So you can try that in, in more therapeutic doses. Supplements you could take if for, to avoid inflammation, also in a preventative way, zinc and copper, more zinc than copper, but you need to take both, so it has to be in balance. D vitamin, as I mentioned before, you can, if you're not really into the food or dietary advice, you can buy alkaline powder or MSM, which have the same function, which makes your body more alkaline. If you have arthritis, you use enzymes. You can also buy glucosamine sulfate or MSM, which uh, kind of um, slows down the process where the cartilage gets broken down. Spices like ginger and turmeric are anti-inflammatory and worship. So for some people, worship works, for some people it does not, so you have to try that out. For your gut health is the probiotics of good bacteria and prebiotic later on maybe the food for the bacteria. Um, you can also use ground flax seeds, psyllium husk, um, digestive enzymes, which helps to your body to produce their own enzymes. If you maybe eat always very fast, you don't chew properly, you are stressed when you eat, this can be a help for the bigger meals. Or glutamine, glutamine is normally in powder form. It's an amino acid which helps you to, to um, heal the stomach lining. So if you have a leaky gut, which you normally find out when you're testing yourself, you can use that to really heal the gut lighting and you should, should always if you suspect something like this you should first of all go to a good health coach or a, a functional medicine coach practitioner to make the tests but you could you should always try to heal the stomach first before you add pro or prebiotics or even thinking about supplement with vitamins and minerals because if you can't if you have a leaky gut and you can't take the body can't take in the vitamins and minerals then you're kind of wasting your money you should first really focus on gut lining and healing and good bacteria and then add minerals and vitamins if you have a lack so last but not least um so a little summarization alkalize your body in the morning you can use a shot of lemon or apple cider or bicarbonate you can add some ginger turmeric according to your taste um, drink that before everything else and then 10 minutes after you can start drinking or uh, eating 70 percent alkaline forming diet so lots of greens vegetables and berries What's the best diet? It really depends on your genetics, how healthy you are. You know, in genetics is you can have some mutations in your genes which doesn't allow you to take up minerals and vitamins or which kind of blocks certain um, conversions in the body. If you have lots of lots of bad symptoms, then I would advise you to do genetic tests health studies yeah if you have any underlying conditions are you exercising as well or you're having a job where you're sitting more it kind of influencing age elderly people everything works a bit less in elderly people um, the stomach lining you have not enough stomach acid as well you have or you have less um, you may be it's a social thing as well if you maybe your partner died you don't, your, your kids are out of the house, you're all by yourself. Maybe do you don't really feel like cooking so much for yourself. So you don't really get in a lot of nutrients. Uh, besides that the body might not 
take up everything. Um, so it's a social question, lifestyle habits and your gut health, of course. I would recommend fast walks. You don't have to go to the gym and exercise like crazy. 30 minutes, especially in the morning for your metabolism is the best time to exercise in the morning in the sunlight. So you get B vitamin if you're not living in Sweden or in the northern hemisphere. You need to take the supplement anyhow. Um, because the more even you use, if we talk about joint and cartilage and arthritis, the more you use your joints in a gentle way, the better neutralized they get and vascularized. So you want that. You don't want to sit still and you don't want to run and jog and put pressure on the joints. So cycling, swimming, water gymnastics, really good. Arthritis, the biggest risk factor is overweight because you really kind of put so much pressure on your joints. And also if we talk about high blood sugar, a lot of fat is a fat is a hormone producing lots of negative, more hormones, more estrogen, which is kind of having different um, effects on the body, bad effects um, and preventative to decrease inflammation by exercising and by following dietary advice. So I hope you find some inspiration to use some of it or try some of food recommendations or supplements and if, if, if you really don't have the time time or money to invest in, in testing it costs something but at the same time if you test yourself for certain um, like for inflammatory markers or your hormonal markers or if you have a, a candida or if you have an overgrowth you get faster results and you really know what you can do to get better it's actually more fast. So I thank you so much for listening. I always offer 30 minutes uh, free consultations where you can talk about your problem and then I can let you know how it would work with you before you want to have a real consultation. I am specialized in stress management, hormonal balance and gut health. You can send me an email or check my website. So have a nice day. Bye-bye.